So first off, um, rod and reel. Um, I've got a nine foot rod here rated for a six weight line. Uh, a nine foot uh, six or seven weight rod will be absolutely fine for this beat. Um, and I've got a floating line. Um, sometimes uh, a sink tip would be quite useful uh, or a um, what's called a midge tip, something with a very slow sinking tip to just get below the, the very calm surface that you can see here. Um, on that uh, I'll rig perhaps uh, an eight foot leader of, of eight pound breaking strain line uh, and I'll show you some flies a little bit later on. Um, the key to, to successful sea trout fishing or comfortable sea trout fishing is organisation and what I try and do with my equipment is have everything I need immediately about my person. So everything I need to fish this beat is in my pockets. And what I've got is a set of snips, a head torch, a really powerful head torch, and some leader material in one pocket. In the other pocket, another torch uh, and a small fly box. Um, the reason I carry two torches, uh, one is, is, is to have a fallback. The last thing I want to do is to be 500 metres down here at three o'clock in the morning to find the batteries run out of my head torch. The other reason is, is, is that the first rule of sea trout fishing at night is, is to avoid getting light on the water. Okay, so the, the difficulty with a head torch, if I was using this to change flies uh, or, or, or to sort tangles out or something like that, is if something distracts me, I look up and, and I suddenly illuminate the whole pool and disturb all of the fish. To avoid that, I carry a second torch uh, a much smaller torch, a lower light, and a red filter. Okay, this will do two things. One is it'll reduce the amount of light I'm putting onto the environment and hopefully onto the water. The second thing is it'll, it'll preserve my night vision when I turn it on. Okay, so when I turn it back off again to fish, I'm not blinded. And you'll see that it's attached to me, as is, as, as is uh, my, my, my snips here. Okay, because I, I really don't need to be leaving this behind on, on the riverbank. The other thing you'll notice about my torch and my snips is, 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 is I put some white tape on these, on, on these bits here. That's to help me spot them in low light conditions. Okay, so this white tape, you'll be surprised how much you can see at night and pick out these bits of equipment without actually having to rely on any illumination. In addition to that, on my back, I'm carrying a net. Just a, a very simple uh, net and again I've got a little bit of white tape on the rim of that there so that hopefully if I've got a fish I can kind of see where the net is as I'm reaching out to, to, um, uh, to net the fish. I carry a bag, this I tend to leave at, at base camp. Uh, in here I will have an extra layer of clothing. One of the things that, that um, people forget when they're attacking sea trout uh, at night is, is just how cold it can get at two, three o'clock in the morning. So I carry an extra layer or two in here. Plus in here, I've got um, uh, my big box of flies. Uh, and, and perhaps most importantly at, uh, of all, um, particularly at, at two o'clock in the morning, is a big flask of coffee. That's in there as well. Flies wise, um, for, for, for sea trout uh, at night, I tend to rely on black flies, okay? I like big black flies. And what I'll do is I'll take a selection out of here and put them into my small box to sit in my vest uh, whilst I fish. Um, and I like black hair wing flies because they give a really good silhouette against the night sky. Okay, some anglers will like um, to use bright flies or, or even experiment with, with luminosity. But me, I like simple, black, quite large um, sea trout flies. So that's what I'm going to be using tonight. Um, and what I tend to do, much as I do with, with my wild brown trout fishing, is I will have a small number of patterns, but in a, 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 a number of different sizes. Okay, so I'll have three or four patterns in my box from, from fairly small, perhaps size, size uh, 10 long shank up to low water salmon 
um, size four or six doubles. Um, so sort of give me a little bit more weight uh, and, and, and a much bigger fly to play with. We've got a bit of time now to wait until it gets dark uh, and it's very important that we don't um, start fishing too early. We need to wait until it's properly dark before we set about trying to catch these fish. In the meantime, what we're going to do is walk the beat, um, have a bit of a recce, have a look at where the spots uh, to fish are in the main access points. Um, so we'll do that now and then, and then perhaps have a cup of tea before it gets dark. Okay, and what you need to be thinking about is, is, is obviously where you're going to fish, but also where you intend to get into the river, where you intend to cast, and most importantly, where you intend to get out of the river again. Um, but whilst I recommend doing that, it's really important that we don't go disturbing the, the pools that we intend to fish um, before, uh, before it's dark. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look and we're going to have a look at, at, at these exit and entrance points. But we're going to make sure that we don't um, show ourselves to any fish that might be lurking in the pools there. You'll see the water over my right shoulder here is, is, is fairly shallow. I can see the stones and, and, and I can see that there aren't any fish here at the moment. Okay. Tonight, the sea trout will be a lot more active. With darkness falls, the sea trout will leave the lies that they spend uh, the daylight hours in and will spread out uh, across the pool a little bit more. So just because there's no fish in here now, no fish in this particular stretch here now, doesn't mean that, that come darkness tonight there, that there won't be any at all. And similarly, if you see fish lying in the pool in the daylight, doesn't necessarily mean that come, come nightfall that they're going to be in the same positions. All right? So obviously it's an encouraging uh, factor to see the fish there, um, but don't assume that they'll be in exactly the same place when you come to fish for them later on. I love this time of night. It's um, too early to start fishing yet. It's um, really want to um, wait for it to be properly dark before we start fishing so so now's the time to kind of chill out and allow the kind of darkness to 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 develop around you really and it's a great time to be out here because the whole river is starting to come to life now there's the odd bat around there's still a few birds around um sometimes we'll see the odd sea trout splosh on the surface so or something like that um but we don't really want to start fishing until it's properly dark uh, sea trout anglers talk about um, waiting until all of the green has come out of the grass or, or waiting until they've seen, I don't know, six bats before they start fishing or something like that. For me, it's kind of a case of waiting until you think it's properly dark and then waiting a bit more and, 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 and trying to, to curb that enthusiasm until, until it is properly dark. If you don't want to do that, if you do want to get started before it gets dark, then, then pick somewhere like this where you've got some moving water and uh, you're not going to disturb too many of the sea trout further downstream uh, whilst, you, whilst you muck around up here. Um, uh, but for me, I'm just going to make a cup of tea and, uh, and wait for the darkness. Something that beginners often ask me about uh, about this boat, about night fishing, is is how, how do they know if they're casting far enough? How do you know where you're casting? And the answer is you don't really. You can't quite see where you're going. Um, you know what direction it's going, but you, it's it's more difficult to tell how far you're casting. You can get a feel for it, but but the bottom line is is what I would say is cast until you know you hit a tree or hit a bank on the opposite side and then wind in a little bit.
just bring a little bit of that line in and that's the distance you're looking for. And then stick with it really because it, it's, it's, apart from the odd overhanging tree, it's relatively uniform in width this stretch. Quite tempting sometimes when you um, when you hear a fish moving further down in the pool to just kind of hightail it down there after them and and, and and cover them. I've never found that to be a successful way of doing things. I've, I've kind of I've seen sea trout rise and jump out of the water and you know within seconds I've been casting flies over them and uh, it's never worked for me. So I kind of, I don't ignore them, I kind of, I kind of log where, where I think that fish moved and make sure I do cover it later on. But I certainly don't feel the need to, to chase across the pool and, 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 and quickly get a fly onto them as if it's a feeding trout or something. I hope you found this, um, this video useful and hopefully it will encourage you to to come and have a go. Without doubt this beat has got um, a huge amount of untapped potential with regards to, to sea trout fishing at night and, and hopefully looking at this video will encourage you to come and give it a go. And who knows, maybe I'll, I'll see you on the riverbank maybe next season. Good night.